the photography and filmmaking worlds are no strangers to seismic innovation, and Nikon's recently announced partnership with Red Digital Cinema is set to redefine the game once again. With the debut of the Z Mount V Raptor and Komodo X under the Z Cinema banner, Nikon has made its intentions crystal clear. It's willing to pursue dominance at both the high-end cinematic level and in the consumer hybrid camera category. But the emerging buzz around a new hybrid model, the Nikon Z, suggests an even bolder vision is underway. Tentatively planned for release in late 2025, the Nikon ZR with R clearly signifying its red DNA appears poised to offer pro-level cinema features in a sub-$5,000 package, challenging what consumers expect at this price point. The Nikon ZR is rumored to occupy a unique space, an unapologetically video-first mirrorless camera built for creators unwilling to compromise between stills and motion capture. Distinct from Nikon's current Z-series hybrids, which are photo-centric with video as a secondary function, the Nikon ZR is designed from the ground up for cinematic workflows. At its heart lies a 24.5-megapixel partially stacked CMOS sensor, likely the same one found in the Nikon Z63. Already proven for both photography and 6K video capture, the sensor's promising performance would be elevated by RED's proprietary image processing and color science, reportedly enabling an impressive 14.5 stops of dynamic range, nearly cinematic in quality. This suggests a future-proof sensor that delivers deep shadow detail and clean highlights, making the Nikon Z a serious contender for high-end productions. The video capabilities of the Nikon Z are where things really get interesting. It is anticipated to support 6K red code RAW at 60fps, giving filmmakers internal cinema-grade capture without needing external recorders. Along with RED's RAW format, creators will also have access to Nikon's own NRAW and Apple Pro's codecs, offering flexibility for every type of workflow. RED code RAW delivers efficient compression without sacrificing image fidelity, while Pro's enables smooth, edit-ready files, and NRAW offers Nikon shooters continuity with their existing storage and color pipelines. Further suggesting heavy RED integration, rumors point to onboard RED look loot application during recording, meaning users could generate footage with built-in cinematic profiles, eliminating the need for complex color grading in post-production. The Nikon ZR is expected to take a cue from cinema-oriented designs, adopting a compact, brick-style body reminiscent of the Sony FX3 or Nikon's own Z30. Rather than a traditional DSLR silhouette, this minimalistic, video-centric approach emphasizes functionality. There's reportedly no electronic viewfinder, no mechanical shutter, overkill for cine workflows, and yet it offers 20fps raw stills for those shooting hybrid content. Filmmaker frustrations with small, fixed LCDs seem to be addressed by the ZR's rumored oversized articulating screen, possibly larger than 3.5 inches, enabling better framing, touch control, and visibility in varied shooting conditions. Additionally, design parallels to the V-Raptor suggest enhanced heat dissipation and improved port layout, allowing longer recording times without the fear of overheating or awkward cabling. Mount versatility remains a key asset. The Nikon ZR should support native Z-mount lenses right out of the box, and with the FTZ2 adapter, F-mount glass will also be usable. For more cinematic workflows, industry chatter indicates Nikon may offer a PL mount adapter, either OEM or through aftermarket manufacturers, expanding compatibility with large cine lenses, echoing options available for the V-Raptor and Komodo X. Nikon's acquisition of RED in 2024 was about more than just patents. It brought decades of cinematic expertise into their fold. Under the hood, the Nikon ZR is expected to embody three core elements from RED's cinematic temperament. While the sensor is unlikely to be full global shutter, its stack design could significantly reduce rolling shutter, a common problem in fast-paced video environments. RED's extended highlights mode, which pushes dynamic range beyond 20 stops in its flagship models, might also be dialed down in the ZR, giving filmmakers the ability to capture extreme contrast scenes without wasted highlight detail. Resting on RED code RAW's legs, the Nikon ZR could offer efficient internal recording without sacrificing creative choice. 
a boon for solo shooters who want cinematic quality without massive file sizes. There's even talk of electronic ND filter integration, similar to RED's motion mount system. This kind of tech would revolutionize exposure control, especially for mirrorless builders who still rely on lens-mounted ND filters that can be bulky or inconvenient. With a projected price tag near $4,499, the Nikon ZR slots neatly beneath high-end cinema units like the Komodo XZ and peers like the Sony FX3. Its value proposition, bringing internal red code raw and cinematic level performance to solo operators and documentary shooters who no longer want to carry external recorders or whether a steep cinematic ecosystem. Sony's FX3 remains a formidable competitor, offering excellent autofocus and portability but lacking internal raw capture the Nikon ZR could outperform it in purely video workflows. As rivals such as Panasonic and Sony update their video hybrid models, Nikon's ace up its sleeve is this authentic connection to RED, with all the cinematic credibility that implies. However, ambition comes with challenges. For the Nikon ZR to succeed, Nikon must skillfully integrate RED's powerful but complex technology into a user-centric interface. RED's color pipelines often intimidate casual users. Nikon will need to streamline settings and workflows for broader appeal. The lack of an EVF electronic viewfinder might also deter photographers who expect hybrid convenience. Additionally, Fujifilm's imminent development of a full-frame cinematic hybrid leveraging its e color science could cut into Nikon's momentum, especially if priced aggressively. The Nikon ZR isn't just a product. It may become a statement by embedding RED's cinematic DNA into a more approachable body. Nikon is challenging a long-held assumption. Cinema-grade capture must be inaccessible or prohibitively expensive. This move suits the broader trend. Creators increasingly expect tools that deliver 6K plus resolution, internal raw capture, and ergonomic controls without Hollywood budgets. Nikon's existing Z cinema cameras have already signaled their intent to push high-end production workflows. But if the Nikon ZR delivers on expectations, it could democratize those workflows. Much like the Z9 brought flagship performance to stills photographers, the Nikon ZR could become the gateway into cinematic creation for a new generation of filmmakers. As 2025 winds down, anticipation builds. Will Nikon execute perfectly, balancing cinematic depth and user-friendliness? Will the Nikon ZR become the go-to hybrid for filmmakers who crave internal red code raw and top-tier image quality without a six-figure budget? Or will unresolved design trade-offs, no EVF, steep learning curve, steep competition, undermine its appeal? With its forthcoming release, the Nikon ZR may well mark an inflection point. The moment when cinema and consumer-grade gear truly converge, blurring the line between artistic ambition and practical accessibility. Nikon and RED have already changed the conversation. Soon, thanks to the Nikon Z up, that change may trickle into every creator's toolbox. What are your hopes or concerns for the Nikon Z up? Share your thoughts below. 2025 is poised to be an exciting year in cinematic gear innovation.